Hey everyone, thank you for joining us uh, at the SMI community call. Um, it is Wednesday, April 15th, 2020. Um, we have a fantastic agenda today. Um, we are going to kick it off with Solo. They're going to present to us um, Service Mesh Hub. Uh, then we're going to kick it off to, I believe, Nick Jackson, who's going to give us an overview of Project Hamlet. Um, then we have some discussion items uh, like the SMI spec conversion webhook and versioning and backwards compatibility, which is always an excellent and very entertaining and very crazy conversation, um, but very, very necessary. So uh, that's always fun. Um, then we have the SMI blog launches announcement. Um, uh, and then let's see. Um, we also have a link to the webinar about SMI featuring our very own Lockie, Thomas, and Stefan. Um, and then after that, we are going to uh, open it up to any other discussions. There probably won't be that much time. So I'm going to time box everyone to whatever I feel like. Congratulations. Welcome to SMI. Just kidding. Um, okay. So uh, first up, I'm going to hand it off to Solo. Um, yeah. uh, Can we actually do it after uh, Nick, please? Sure, sure. No problem. No problem at all. Nick, I appreciate uh, it. Is Nick on or anybody from Project Hamlet? I am on. I'm not sure if Nick is here, by the way. Let me see. List of attendees. No. No, I Nick doesn't seem to be here. Nick. I don't see him, but feel free to give us an overview. Are you prepared to do that? Yeah, I do. Okay. Yeah. Um, and feel okay. free to talk. Welcome to the community. Yeah, let me share my screen. And uh, we can do this um, in two ways, less technical way, more technical way. I assume we have 10 minutes for that. Is that right? About seven so that we have a few minutes for Q&A. If, if you seven minutes? Yeah, that's okay, yeah. Let me then do that quickly. Um, so people in the call already know about the project uh, because this was in community more or less by the same time that SMI was. And uh, a uh, basically the idea with uh, or the underlying use cases of the a federation spec that we have created in community and led by VMware has been to pretty much a similar objectives to SMI, that is uh, how to a, enable the interoperation of two different service meshes, where these two service meshes are not necessarily compatible between them, right? So th there are different problems that we have in this space. Uh, the ones we are uh, trying to solve with a uh, Hamlet are a, the identification, discovery, and communication of services. So this is more uh, layer four problems, more networking focused problems. And um, the idea is that uh, we can help uh, our customers to a bootstrap integrations with other products they already have, or we can help them with that. We can a, help them to expand the service mesh to more uh, places than these um, that the, the initial place they start with. And uh, also some customers, we, we anticipate that some customers are going to have configuration challenges with the service meshes in terms of how they should be configured to fulfill uh, compliance requirements, especially PCI requirements. PCI may require in the future a multi-vendor approach to service meshes as a networking solution that they are. The same way they are really doing it with other networking uh, products, right? And the overall objective is obviously to uh, sell more, sell faster. Uh, it's from the VMware company perspective. Um, the the um, project itself is only um, solving one small problem that is a um, service interconnection and service discovery. Uh, in that big space that is Mesh Federation. This is a spec that we built <clears throat> during several months with different companies. Pivotal now is part of VMware, as you know, but it wasn't by the time. And this is something we have also done with, a, as you may know, with a, a Consul and, uh, and Google. More recently, uh, there have been some discussions in the Istio community to incorporate this into Istio, something that we have 
um, a, uh, a, I would say uh, that the, one of the objectives of the project is to keep it independent. So we are, we are not tied to any specific technologies. So just to give you an example, um, Hamlet has two things today. One is uh, a vendor neutral, platform neutral service entry that you can use to interchange information about uh, services across platforms. And the other one is a protocol to do that interchange. So for the protocol, many things can be used. Uh, the important thing here is the, the data models, the object that we are sharing, not so much the protocol. The protocol can be anything, as I said. And there have been some discussion in the Istio community, naturally, because they were part of the initial spec, uh, around adopting some of the existing Istio protocol, more precisely MCP. But because we wanted to maintain Hamlet vendor independent and, and uh, have its own life cycle, we decided to keep it uh, a to keep it its own protocol and not tie it to MCP. A little bit later than that, then Google announced that uh, a Istio was never going to be part of CNCF, and uh, that meant that we made the right decision by the time because we were not attaching Hamlet to something uh, really existing. So. Um, open and, ex and extensible, so no constraints at all, no interference at all. So the idea is that uh, this is, uh, this should be, um, a, it should be, shouldn't be imposing a constraint on existing vendors or technologies. So this should be uh, non-disruptive. And uh, the problem we are trying to solve is not multi-clustering, the very, People was confused, or oh, you do multi-cluster. No, multi-cluster is when you own all of the infrastructure and you can make conventions uh, for a network addressing, namespacing, policy, etc. The problem we are solving is a, a multiple administrative domains, and these ones do not share information between them, and it is not possible to normalize or to make conventions. And this can be situations as easy as two service meshes with one cluster each or can be multi-clustering in each of the service meshes that we are federating those details about how many clusters or what is the infrastructure type or where is the infrastructure located are not shared in the protocol and that is the purpose of the protocol precisely. So um, there are many problems in this space to be solved in the interconnection space. Um, a, we have to have a way to interoperate these meshes, that is to interchange the uh, service discovery um, a object is the, the object model between the two meshes. We have to have an object model. We have to have a way to federate identities if the meshes are not trusted between them and we can relay on the single root CA. And we have to have a way to implement the automation required in each of the participants in the federation in, with regards to uh, routing of the uh, of the service meshes in terms of how a mesh is going to expose services and how a mesh is going to consume services exposed by other meshes. All these are problems to be solved. So far, we have solved these two problems. And uh, the first one, we, what we have done is uh, manual certificate distributions. So yes, we have a protocol to do the interoperation, but the trust is a, a, um, a, a common root CA. We haven't solved the identity problem. Uh, so far, we have been watching uh, a protocols like uh, an identity federation protocol a done in community by um, CITL, but then CITL was acquired, as you may know, uh, by HP Enterprise. And that is, um, is, we don't really know what is going to happen with that. And so far, uh, as far as we know, that is the only uh, viable protocol as of now. So if unless we do anything related to that, then Mesh Federation is going to require common root CA or the uh, the, the trust is going to the uh, to the ingresses of the of the meshes if they have an ingress at all, which is not a requirement of the of the spec. So for us the differentiation between Hamlet and SMI is that SMI is targeting more APIs um, which are user facing. Uh, for practitioners, and in the case of uh, Hamlet, this is more machine to machine, what is required to make that communication happen between mesh, so we can really make the traffic flow between them and not only have a single object model to do configuration management 
across uh, the heterogeneous meshes. I hope that makes sense. This is a, a proof of concept that we did with HashiCorp. And this is a working proof of concept. We federated uh, any sex service mesh that is now called Tansu service mesh with Consul. Consul had uh, VMs, and this was a super early version of Consul with uh, beta ingress, um, but it worked. We basically used the envoys of the um, both a Tansu service mesh that is using Istio under the hood, uh, and uh, a console that was also injecting Istio alongside the VMs. So um, basically the flow is simple, right? So we have a, a service entry, a remote service entry that is injected into the local mesh catalog. And then that uh, a entry in the local catalog is pointing to the ingress of the other mesh. And that is how the, the a flow of traffic happens. Um, in this case, we had a, the common root CA, so the envoy ha have certificates uh, signed by the same CA, and the ingresses were doing pass through of the traffic to the uh, to the other ingress, which terminated the MTLS. And the opposite direction is exactly the same from console to uh, menace tech service mesh. So the protocol is syn synchronizing the catalogs in both service meshes as services are created and destroyed. There is no uh, there are no specifics in the protocol about how the user experience should be in each of the meshes regard, regarding a, how to expose or consume or how to decide which services are exposed or consumed in each of the meshes. That is something that we have preferred to leave to each of the products. This is a product decision and not necessarily a protocol decision. Um, we're about at time. Would you mind taking a minute to just wrap up here? Yeah, we're, I'm done, really. Thank you. Thank you so much. I uh, appreciate it. Um, we have like one minute for questions. Does anybody have like a quick question? Any quick questions? Yeah, so I just had a quick question, uh, Sergio. So anytime there are two services in the two meshes that need to talk to each other, it'll, it'll always have to go through the, to the egress of one and the egress of the other? Uh, no, not necessarily. Uh, I also have a question. Oh, sorry. So it was just in that example you set it up in yes. that fashion? Okay. Yeah, in the example, yes, we used ingresses and egresses, and, uh, but it is not a requirement. Okay. There can be multiple implementations of this. The uh, protocol does not really require having an ingress or an egress. It is, it is strongly... Um, a uh, encourage to have an ingress because it allows you flexibility to do different implementations of the of the protocol and also because in you know in production ready environments you are going to be required to have an ingress and an egress. Thanks. Uh, I have a question. Does this preserve the identity of the calling service? It does, yes. How does it do that if the egress is terminating in TLS session? Oh, the, the egress is not terminating. Egress and egress, ingress and egress are doing pass through. Gotcha. All right, we got to cut it off here. Um, I know there are several other questions, um, but let's go ahead and move on to Solo's presentation. If we have time at the end, we'll come back for questions. Thank you so much for, uh, for presenting, Sergio. If you have a link to the deck and any information you'd like to drop into the notes, that'd be really great. Sure. Thank you for this opportunity. Absolutely. Uh, all right. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, so, Bridget, would you mind dropping uh, a link to the notes for me um, in the chat? Appreciate it so much. Um, all right, uh, Edith, I'll hand it off to you, seven minutes. Yeah, so uh, I will start just real, real quick to uh, show the slide and then Christian will do a demo, okay guys? Can you see my screen? Yep. Hey, that's really, really uh, simple. So we announced mm -hmm. a week ago. Can you see that, everything's okay? Really yeah. Okay, cool. So uh, service mesh, we announced it uh, basically a week ago, I think, even less, uh, maybe a week. Um, basically, uh, just I wanted to give you, um, that's kind of like an extension of the project that we did super glue before that. To be honest, it's exactly on the same way that we did super glue. It's, on, it's basically just a better implementation for everything that we did, but the vision is the same. Um, basically, we're working a lot on, with Superglue community as well as with SMI. And when we worked on all of this, we got 
five, uh, three pushback. One of them was about the common, uh, the lower common denominator. People basically really was against it. They felt that this is a limited them. Um, and they, it was also hard for them to, to not, you know, to basically be slow by the, 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 the mesh that is, is, is um, moving slower. Uh, and it was a very hard problem for us to come to, a, to for instance, for a customer is using Estio and tell him you cannot use a uh, circuit breakage because one of the other mesh does not support that. So that's a really, really problematic problem. And we got a huge pushback. We, all of us, got a, a, a huge uh, pushback from the community. So that's number one. Number two, that we got a lot of requests in Superglue is basically to support the last uh, version of each meshes, um, specifically STL 1.5. And the last one was multi-cluster, all about the multi-cluster. Um, so basically what we announced last uh, Wednesday, it's pretty, pretty simple. Christian will show us a demo in a second, but it's very, very simple. You can register a cluster. Once you register a cluster, we're managing it. We're discovering a lot of things about this cluster. We discover every mesh that's running in this cluster. We're discovering the workload that belong to those mesh. So basically we're going, we're looking at this, you know, we're basically detecting the side current that we know that it's belong to the mesh. And we basically have all those information. You can also install a mesh right, and, and, and upgrade if you need to. We basically abstract the operator of, Envo, of SDO and link the installation and so on. Um, once that happened, uh, we add an API, we extended the SMI API. Uh, it looks more like the glue API in the point of like, it's actually also, you can choose source, not only destination, and it's not a lower common denominator. Uh, we also changed the access policy a, 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 a bit. Uh, and again, Christian, will show you in a sec. Um, but I think it's a really, really simple way to actually uh, describe a mess configuration. There is a source, there is a destination, there is stuff that's going on the pipe. Um, and the, the other thing that we introduce is basically the grouping of those meshes and we're calling it virtual mesh. So you can take two meshes, group them together. We are doing behind the scene all the mess of actually, you know, uh, identity and, uh, and a rotation, roots of, you know, a certificate rotation and so on. And basically just making sure that those two meshes will be able to talk and again, we will get to the detail in a second. All the team is here so they can talk in more details. And we will call it virtual mesh. Um, and, and we also and now a, a added another feature that I think it's pretty cool. And I have it a quick, uh, a quick show. It's really, really simple. I have a cluster, I have a lot of services. I define a source, I define a destination, I define a policy on the rule. But as we all know, this is only where the problem is st started. There are going to be a lot, of, a lot of sources, a lot of destination. And what you kind of like losing all of this is what's going on for a specific service configuration. So we basically create a, a, CL, it's a CLI command right now called describe, but basically you can zoom into a specific service and see what, what rules apply on it. Uh, by the way, the way a service, a service mesh is working is that when you apply a new rule, if, it's, if we cannot honor it, we're just going to error out on this. The status will be for not apply. So it's, it's not going to break. It's just not going to be applied. So that's kind of like, I'm not going to talk more. I'm, I, I'm all about, let's see it. So I will move my, the, the screen to Christian and Christian will show you them. Cool, let's uh, give me one second. Let me share my screen. And like you are not supposed to do moments before the demo and making changes to the demo. So wish me luck on how this goes. Let's uh, share my, yeah, that screen. Okay. You should be able to see my terminal. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Yep. Looks right, good. Right, so sorry, was somebody going to say something? All right, so what we have here is we have two different clusters running on GKE. And in cluster number one, we have an Istio installation. Uh, we can see we have uh, the book info, part of the book info, Istio's book info demo install, where we have reviews v1 and reviews v2. And in a second cluster, we have a different Istio installation. And over there, 
we have we have reviews v3 running all right so that's that's the setup we have um service mesh hub installed so we can see the the pods that make up service mesh hub we let's see if we can get uh We've registered these two clusters in, inside of Service Mesh Hub. And then we've discovered, automatically discovered the two different service meshes. So this happened before I was setting up. I knew we had time constraints, so I kind of set up that, that stuff. If we, if we check Service Mesh Hub, we should see and cross our fingers that everything's installed, everything's looking, everything's looking good. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is now we have two different service meshes. They have been installed individually and separately and they have different trust routes. So for example, on cluster one, when reviews calls ratings, we should see a certificate chain right here. We can see the route that's, that, that signed that certificate chain um, ends in whatever, GAG, right? On the, on the second cluster, we should see a different route when reviews calls ratings, right? Because those are two different, those are two different clusters here. It shouldn't be GAG anymore. It should be something else, right? So we have two different root uh, trust domains here. Now, as Edith mentioned, the virtual mesh resource in Service Mesh Hub allows us to group multiple different service meshes. In this case, it'll be two Istios. Um, if we look at the virtual mesh, we can see that will will automatically generate a root CA from which those two meshes will derive so that we want to federate this identity. Uh, we want to include these two meshes and they're defined here. Now we won't enable RBAC and, and policy control, but we'll do that in a, in a little bit later. And the federation mode that we're going with is permissive, which means as we unify them, we will enable service discovery for all of the services between the, the two meshes. So let's cross our fingers and apply this virtual mesh. And let's take a look at it. We should see, ah, damn it. <laughs> um, one second, that did fail, but that is a known thing that we have fixed in a new version. So let's give that another try going to get virtual mesh. Please, no errors. Please, no errors. Okay. Sorry, that's, I'm using a little bit older version, um, but that's, that's fixing a newer version. But so when we, when we create the virtual mesh abstraction, um, what we, what we end up doing now is telling each of the meshes, you go off and create your own intermediate uh, certificates, send it to the management plane that will be signed by the root and then now now uh use those intermediates with signed by that root shared root um, for each of the different meshes so no keys get transferred over the network what we're doing is uh, sending certificate signing requests so we can see here on the management plane the virtual mesh ca cert that gets created this ends up being the root Let's see if we can try to remember this Y, A, and a couple of equal signs. And then what we see on the remote clusters and any of the remote clusters is this certificate signing request. So this certificate signing request ends up being sent to the management plane. And then we should see that the root at ah, base 64 encoded, but I'll show in a second. We should see that this was signed by the, the roots, the root certificate that was created by the management plan. So ultimately what we end up having then is secrets created on each cluster. We can see the CA search for Istio here on cluster one. We can see this, the CA search on cluster two, both of them signed by the same root, which lives on the management plane. And now because of a kind of an issue, issue with Istio that we have to, we have to bounce the, uh, the, the Istio control plane to pick up this new CA. Um, we'll give that a second. Let's bounce it on both clusters so that they both pick up their new source of trust. 
We'll give that a second. We open an issue for it and we're going to fix it for them. Yes, on, on Istio. We should yeah. see the, um, the workloads should now be provisioned with their new source of trust. And now if we check the certs, when we call, uh, all right, well, so they're, they're coming. Hopefully they're coming up and they're fine. Let's cross our fingers for that. Now, now the cert chain that we see when reviews calls ratings in uh, cluster one. Oh, <laughs> let's try that again. Oh, I know we're what happened. Almost at, I mean, all we're right, almost we're almost there. there. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we're almost um, so reviews calls ratings, right? So uh, while he's doing it, I'm going to just uh, talk real quick. I mean, we didn't have time because this demo is really, really quick, but actually what I think really, really cool about this project is the fact that it's really, really easy to do stuff with it. So for instance, when you're starting, you can init demo and that's spinning up all the environment for you already to kind of like go and try it. I think this is really, really, really strongly uh, recommended. And as I said, there's way more functionality uh, and yes, hopefully Christian demo will work. It's yeah, so good. now we see on the, on the, on the call from rate reviews or uh, ratings to reviews, we see that the root chain is now our source root. And then if we do the same thing on cluster two, right here, talking to cluster two, we should see the same root now. So our identities across the clusters have been, um, they're, they're, they share the same, the same source. Now, like Adit mentioned on top of this, we built, uh, uh, the ability to do traffic routing and access policies um, now that the meshes are unified, um, but we'll have to show that later. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, we don't have time for questions, so I'd really like to invite um, both the folks from Hamlet and Solo back. Uh, this is recorded, so if you want to take another look at the demos, please do. I encourage the community to do that and then come back uh, next meeting to ask your questions or ask them in the SMI um, community Slack. Uh, Bridget posted a link to our blog post about SMI going into the CNCF as a sandbox project uh, in the um, notes. If you have a blog that you'd like to write, please uh, contact her. Is that the right thing to do, Bridget? Sure, absolutely. Um, okay, cool. And there are so many new people here, which is really, really great. Come back next time so you can introduce yourselves to the community and we can talk a little bit more about the project and triage. Um, but until then, I'll see y'all next time. <laughs>